What is up everybody? The Hunter GT with the HunterGT.com. That's right. Go check out the website. Got the rad metal detecting form over there. I would love it if you came, talk shop, said hello, post your finds, all that good stuff. The HunterGT.com. What is going on today? The Gold Finder 2000 from Nocta Macro is what's going on. Kind of a surprise release, you know? I, they announced this, uh, what, a couple months back on social media. Next thing you know, it's at my front door ready to review. So quite a fast turnaround from, you know, showing it off on social media and then having it available for review as a full package. So I'm pretty impressed with the speed of Nocta Macro with this one here. Kind of uh, a surprise release, you know? I don't think anybody was expecting it. Everybody's waiting for the multi-frequency detector from Nocta Macro. Uh, keep waiting. It's not out just yet. Don't ask me about a date. Don't ask me about functions, anything like that. I cannot say even if I know. So please don't flood my comment section with a bunch of silly comments. This is a detector that stands on its own two feet as far, or its own single coil, I guess, as far as I'm concerned. The easiest gold detector to use, designed for the toughest gold fields in the world. That is the claim we will see if it is correct in this video coming up you want to pick one of these bad boys up who are you going to contact me of course i am a nocta macro dealer the hunter gt at gmail.com is my email address i would love to have your business so right away let's get a couple i'm not this isn't a comparison video but 61 kilohertz high frequency we see on the box here right there 61 kilohertz well what else is 61 kilohertz high frequency the gold cruiser from nocta macro so two top end flagship gold prospecting machines, both 61 kilohertz. Yes, they swap coils with each other. This one is based on the Amphibio model right here. We see the straight shaft while the Gold Cruiser is based on the Cruiser Multi, basically with the S shaft, the lower carbon fiber rod. This one is slightly heavier than that one, um, but it's slightly better build quality, I feel, the Amphibio platform. So this is definitely based off the Amphibio. This is a rainproof only detector. The Gold Cruiser is waterproof, fully waterproof. You can dunk the whole thing. Do not dunk this one all the way. The control box, you will be in a world of hurt. The Gold Cruiser is fully customizable. You can set up just about every mode the way you want it. This one, the name of the game here, the claim to fame, is fully automatic turn on and go operation. High performance and unmatched depth. Advanced discrimination. 2.4 gigahertz wireless speaker. Not headphones, wireless speaker. LCD backlight and LED flashlight. Built-in LiPo battery. Retractable shaft. Online for more updates and the two-year Nocta Macro warranty right there. So what comes in the box for this gold finder? Package contents, waterproof concentric search coil, 26 by 14 centimeters, GK26C. So GK stands for gold cruiser, 26 centimeters, C for concentric coil. So they are swappable coils between the gold cruiser and this gold finder 2000, which is good news for everybody. Waterproof DD search coil, 13 centimeter, the GF13, it's a five inch round DD. So two coils in the box right here. Cost headphones, UR20 wired headphones. They are not wireless, they are wired headphones, but you do get a wireless speaker that you can mount in your shirt pocket or anything like that. It is also a headphone module. You can plug your headphones right into that and you now have a wireless headphone set up basically. System box carrying case right here so you can take the head unit off the shaft and hip mount it if you want to. I know a lot of gold prospectors like to do that to wait to lighten up the shaft if they're if you're hunting on the inside of a mine on the walls or something like that you definitely don't want to be holding the whole detector up the whole time definitely helps to hip mount it if you're on a, on a grade on a side grade on a vertical side grade or something like that uh, USB charging and data cable in the box as well so there it is the gold finder 2000 I'm excited see how a fully automatic gold machine from Nocta Macro is going to work. So without further ado, why don't you shut your face to Hunter GT and let's go open this up and see what this Gold Finder 2000 is all about. All right, here we go with everything laid out. I say everything, but I don't know if they will be boxing these two items. You know, they're not on the box. This is the little headphone adapter that you can buy separately. Uh, they run, they're like 10 to 15 bucks. And then the double A battery pack right here the external one that mounts onto the bottom of it Oops, right here onto the bottom so and then it comes with another piece that's a little mounting bracket for it so i don't know if these are going to come i'm pretty sure they just sent me these to show off on video um i appreciate that and so i'm going to go ahead and show them off there is the five inch coil 
26 by 14 centimeter coil. I don't know what that converts to in inches. Uh, I wish we just used a metric system already. That's a different video entirely, I guess, but I think it's time. Um, so there we go. There's the two coils. That's the concentric, the DD round right here. Arm strap right there. The cable connection to charge the detector and to charge the wireless uh, speaker is that one. And then it comes with three coil bolts with washers right there, one for each coil. And then a backup costs you are 20 headphones right here with a quarter inch adapter it does come with the eighth inch end right there and plenty of length you're going to have plenty of room with that cable right there that is for sure so there are the costs you are 20 headphones here is the wireless speaker right here but it's also a wireless module you can plug the headphones into it right there that's an added surprise i wasn't expecting so it's not only is it a wireless speaker but it is a wireless module as well and you flip that up and you have your usb charging port right there here is the case for it right here so these two holes right there are going to be those two green ports on the back of the detector there for the coil on the right side and you see the headphone and battery symbol on that side, that's how you charge it. It is a, what, nine pin connection right there, I wanna say, and five pin on the right. It does have a speaker built like a tank, just like the Amphibio and the Cruiser, tons of screws on the back, super overbuilt plastic, but you gotta love knock the macro for that. The single screw right here, take that out and it should just detach right off and you plop it right in there. That's where the two green ports pop out. And that is your speaker. On the other side, it connects to your hip. So. You can't adjust, you know, it's not like a see-through where you make adjustments or anything. You have to take it out to make any adjustments, but there's not much to this one, as you'll see in the next portion for the setup and the menu. Um, it's fully automatic as it's set on the box, so, and they are going to stick with that. And I will show you that. Two shafts right here with the interlocking little click thingy. One on the bottom here, too, as well. So that is the upper and the lower. It does have graduations in it. So you see that it has inches, so you can tell, you can get, get it right every time when you pop it back out. And it does have a little white line on this one on the upper shaft to let you know you've gone too far. Or basically, if you see that white line, you've gone too far, put it back so you can't see it, and you will be set. And here is the GF right here. Clicky buttons on it. It does have the screen protector. I'm going to be leaving that on for the review right there. It's pretty. It's just like the Amphibio and the Cruiser. It's super, I mean, it's super strong, super over, I, I say overbuilt, and that's, that's a good thing. You know, that's a good thing. I want a detector that's overbuilt. That's not a bad, don't take that the wrong way. You know, anybody watching this video, being overbuilt, I think, is a good thing, and Nocta Macro definitely does that. These things are tanks. Um, yeah, so I'm excited to see how it does in the testing coming up here. So what do you say we throw it together? I run through the menu and then uh, how to set it up and everything, the faceplate. And then we will get to some air testing, some small gold testing. Uh, let's check out some iron nail tests. You know how we do it here on the old GT channel. So all that coming up next. All right, here we go with the menu and display setup and everything. I'm going to try to do this just holding the camera, no tripod. It should be a short segment here. So we see a power button here. We see M for mode, pinpoint on bottom right here. And we have a plus minus on right and a plus minus on left. So not too much to the menu here or anything like that. Hold down power for about two, three seconds and you see it pops on here. It's doing a little startup routine. And there's the backlight. You cannot turn the backlight from what... I understand on or off. It's always on. I nothing in the instructions on how to turn that on or off. So battery meter top left or top right. I'm sorry. Get it right. Hunter GT, you idiot. Uh, top left. We have all metal and discrimination. We change that via the M button. See how it pops up and down the little box there. And that's all there is to that. So quite a sensitive detector. I have it sitting on my pillow. This is a wood futon frame and it's picking up small little screws that <laughs> goes through. It's not even a, a metal frame, it's a wood futon and it's picking up the small screws through my bed. So I got it elevated on my pillow right now. Uh, one bar on sensitivity, you change that with these plus minus buttons right here. On the left hand side, that is your sensitivity from eight bars to one and volume over here on the right side 
from eight bars to one. So that's what the plus minus on the right is volume, plus minus on the left is sensitivity. Remember, there's no modes or anything like that other than this mode, all metal to discrimination. There's no fast, there's no boost, there's nothing like that. So it's either all metal or discrimination mode, basically. And pinpoint button is right here. When you hit that, it'll pinpoint. As far as ferrous, your ferrous is gonna read on this left-hand side where the nails are. Any gold bits or non-ferrous is going to read on this side. It'll, how strong it is, it'll fill up the bar. Basically, if it's super strong, it's gonna fill up the bar. If it's super small, it's just gonna come up a couple bits there on it. So that's pretty much the gist of the detector. There's not much to it. I mean, it's, it's pretty easy. To pair the speaker, you're gonna hold down the bottom and the left, and to turn on the backlight, you hold down the pinpoint button and the minus button here. So let's do that, see if we can do it. There we go, you see the lights on, you see it back there on my wall? So the, the light, let's try to turn it off. You gotta get it just right. There we go, it's on, it's off. It's on, it's off. So you are gonna lower the volume when you do that because you have to use the, the down volume and pinpoint button. So just bump it back up to where you want real quick if you turn the light on or off. I think it's a neat feature. It's got two LEDs on the back, one on each side of the detector right above the connection points on the coil and the charging cable. So two LED lights on the back. Pretty cool. So that is pretty much it. That is the menu and setup system. There is nothing else to this detector. It is extremely easy. Just turn on and go. Very basic settings. But I'm telling you, it is a killer. It is a killer with performance. Let's go check out that performance right now with some of that small gold. A quick air test. We'll do a quick air test like I always do. We'll go check small gold. We will check Monty's nail board test, recovery speed, all that good stuff. Coming up next. All right, here we go with an air test. Um, got usual suspects here. 8K ring, not 10K. An 8K thin gold ring, an eagle button, buffalo nickel, Indian head penny, Civil War bullet. Actually, it's from the Mexican War, earlier than the Civil War. Um, a French Sintime, and then three silver, small, medium, large, a dime, a quarter, and a half dollar. So, super sensitive detector. Nothing in my hand. I'm full blast in all metal mode. And it's picking up the salt or iron, whatever, in my hand. I don't know if it's salt or iron. Picking it up in my hand. Super sensitive. So, let's try this gold. Out to about 11. I'm out to about 11 before it starts to really drop off. The eagle button's out to about, oh, 9, 10, I'd say, before you start to lose it to E. I mean, I could still get hits out to 11 or so, but I'd say 9 inches or so is where it really starts to drop off. Buffalo nickel. We're good out to, we're getting repeatable hits at 11. Mm, probably to 12, but we'll call it 11. This is Indian head penny from the nail test. That's good to about, oh, nine or 10, I'd say. Man, about nine is when it really stops repeating. Here's a three ringer lead bullet. You gotta try a different orientation. Some way they really hit good, other ways they don't. Um, right there, it's about, oh, nine inches, I'd say. Let's face it straight up and down. Maybe get an extra inch out of it, 10 inches or so. Big old brass, bronze, I guess it's bronze. I don't know, brass, bronze, I don't know the difference. <clears throat> French sent time from the 1840s. Out to about 11. Yeah, we're getting hits out to a foot. Small silver. Yeah, about 7 inches on the dime before it really starts to drop off. It drops off about 7 half to 8, I guess. Quarter. Oh, about nine and a half, nine, I'd say, is when that one drops off. Big half dollar. Mm, 
eh, about 10 inches, I'd say, something like that. So it definitely likes this range of targets more than it does the high conductors. It likes the low to mid conductors, which it should be in a gold machine. All right, here we go with the recovery speed test. I am in all metal mode. The coins are coil distance apart. Three mercury dimes or, uh, yeah, three mark dimes right there. So three silver dimes. This is all metal mode. Listen to the, the modulation on this VCO. Quite good, quite good. I'm only at three bars right now on the sensitivity and I'm down about three bars on the volume. The speaker and that wireless speaker, both speakers are blazing loud. I mean, you're, you're not gonna miss gold on this one, that's for sure. Blazing fast recovery speed. Let's switch over to the discrimination mode. Let's listen to the tone difference now. A digital tone now in discrimination mode. Not that modulated VCO tone. It is still modulated, listen. So see, as I lift the coil, I get a whisper right there. So both discrimination and all metal are very modulated. Blazing fast recovery speed on the gold finder. Blazing fast. Let's see if it hits that small gold. It's supposed to, right? All right, let's check that small gold. See what we get there. There is the 0.3 gram little picker right there. And there is the no gram. That thing weighs nothing on my grain scale. And let's see how just how big it is compared to my finger there. That is how big that is. It's a 0, 0.0 on my scale. I cannot get this to register on a gram scale. I will need a grain scale. This one is three tenths of a gram. Three tenths of a gram. So a 0. 0.3 gram picker there. All metal mode, five out of eight bars right now. There is the display, no cheating here. We are at, oh, let's go. One, two, three, four, five bars, discriminate or all metal mode, all metal mode. No problem with that one. And no problem with that one, but you notice the tone difference just on that size difference there. I'm basically scrubbing that piece. I don't want to knock it off, but I'm right on the box. Let me, let me crank up the volume all the way. So we're, we're volume eight. Let's listen to it. I mean, it's crazy loud. So there's an all metal mode. Let's go down to discrimination. Still five bars right there. Listen to the tone difference, of course. No problem on the point three. No problem on the small one there at five of eight bars in both discrimination and all metal. Quite a loud speaker. Let's go ahead and put that back down to about five bars itself. So there you go. Hits that small gold, no problem, just like it says it does. Um, let's try Monty's nail board test. I'm kind of interested to see how a automatic setup machine handles the discrimination side. If, you know, if it fails, it fails. If it passes, it passes. Um, I don't think you're gonna be using this in a bed of nails scenario to find small gold pieces. Most gold claims are not like that. Some are, I'm not gonna lie, some are right up by the mine and everything like that, but, uh, or the shaft. But, you know, for the most part, they're not that terrible. You're mostly dealing with 22 casings, bullet shells, bird shot, small bits of iron stuff like that very small bits of iron so not huge square nails and stuff huh some mine sites i'm not speaking about all of them but anyways let's check out the nail test see what happens all right here we go with monty's nail board test we are in discrimination mode as you can see with the box on the pickaxe only five bars still let's see what the nails sound like nothing all the way across the board rotated around little pop here and there from EMI 
Nothing. Let's check the Indian head penny. Definitely giving us a signal. So pop the detector down. Pop that Indian head penny right here on the number one spot. No setting changes, no fancy tricks, still discrimination mode. You can't change any settings on this detector, basically. Still disc mode, five bars. Let's see. Easy. No problem. Eight of eight, no problem. Let's slide it over here. I had a feeling this would be just like the Gold Cruiser, which passes it easily, and it is not disappointing. So number two, look at that. Here we go with the long down the barrel test. Like all detectors, it is struggling a little bit, but a clear hit. Full sweeps, no, no cherry picking stuff. Full sweeps, eight of eight. No problem, no problem for the Gold Flander 2000. Maybe a, a quick turn on and go relic hunter for some of you guys, you never know, you never know. All right, well there it is guys. Hope you enjoyed the Gold Finder 2000 review video. I'm quite impressed for a turn on and go machine. You know, I was skeptical when I when it first landed. I was like, no, and I, I started fiddling with it. I was like, man, it's really limited on the adjustments. You know, it's really limited. It really is turn on and go. Everything's automatic behind the scenes, and it's not disappointing. I, I mean, it's smacking the small gold. It's passing Monty's nail test, eight of eight and eight of eight on both positions. Um, yeah, it's it's a winner, that's for sure. I am quite impressed with it. With the wireless speaker module, you can put you know detachable unit with the hip pouch on it. Yeah, I'm, it's quite impressive. I think it's a great gold detector for someone just getting into the hobby but wants to take it seriously. I think you're gonna have a good detector on your hand right here, a great detector on your hand for finding small gold in some pretty wild conditions. So built like a tank, it's gonna last you a long time. You know, the, the lithium poly battery is gonna fail before the detector does, um, that's for sure. So yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Hope you enjoyed this video. The Hunter GT signing off. I will see you on the next video. Thank you